It was a stormy night in the month of Ikawa during the reign of Alapa'inui. A chiefess of Hawaii, Kekui Apuiva, gave birth to a baby boy. It was foretold by a kahuna that this keiki would become a warrior king and unite the Hawaiian Islands. Signs accompanied the Ali's birth. Crashing waves, peals of thunder, forked lightning, heavy winds, and torrential rains. A great star with a tail of white fire streaked across the heavens. The powerful Alapa Inui and other chiefs of Hawaii Island heard of this prophecy and were not pleased. This child would prove their downfall. Death for the newborn be the only solution. But among other chiefs, another plan was made to save the newborn. Immediately after the birth, Naiole, the great chief of the Halawa district, would take the baby and flee into the hills. He would then deliver the babe safely to Kahaopulani, his half-sister and first cousin, the chiefess Kikuiapuiva. So, on that stormy night, Kamehameha was born. Naoli took the newborn, wrapped in soft kapa cloth, and began the race to save a king. Naoli's destination was Avini. Running with careful speed, he crossed rugged trails, dense forests, swollen rivers, and steep valleys to avoid being captured by Alapai's men. Naoli hid in caves and received help from people in different villages along the way. As Naoli began the trek, he reached Pu'umanakea, a small hill near Mo'okiniheo. He hid there until it was safe and then continued to the first village, Ho'ea, which means to arrive. The people of Ho'ea were waiting anxiously for this blessing to come. They provided Naoli with safe shelter for a brief moment, then sent him and the babe on their way. Naoli's next stop was Havi, a village name meaning to suffer a famine. Because there was no wet nurse, the infant began to cry from hunger. Back at Kokoiki, a worried mother, Chiefess Kikui Apuiva, awaited news of her newborn son. By this time, Alapai's warriors discovered that the baby had been taken. They gathered their forces, searched the surrounding area, and arrived at Havi only to find that Naoli and the child were already gone. The raging storm made their search nearly impossible. Chief Naoli took refuge near Honomaka'u, an area named for seeking shelter from fear. He hid in a place sheltered by trees. The rain and muddy trails made it difficult to continue, but Naoli kept going. As dawn approached, Naoli came to the village of Kapa'au, meaning the place where the kapa went swimming. The streams were swollen because of the heavy rains. When Naoli crossed the swirling water, the baby's kapa got drenched and lost in the current. Naoli then stopped at Halaula, a place named for the severe punishment Olapai's warriors would face if they didn't find the child. Not fulfilling the king's orders was considered a hala, or sin, that would cost the men their ula, or blood. Leaving Halaula, Naoli reached his lands, Halava. There he was safe to rest and catch his breath among his own people. The baby was doing well and had enough breath and strength in him to continue the journey, hence the name Alava, meaning enough breath. From there, Naoli ran to the village of Makapala, named after the warrior's futile attempts to find the newborn. As the men became weary and desperate, their maka or eyes became pala, swollen and ripe like red hala. Naoli kept running until he reached Pololu Valley. Avini was still in the distance. 
he checked to see if Alapai's men were near. The trek down into the valley was dangerous, but the tireless Naoli had vowed to complete this important mission, so he ran toward his final destination. After traveling day and night through miles of rugged mountains and deep valleys, Naoli and the baby Kamehameha finally reached Avini. Naoli's half-sister, Kaha'opulani, was waiting for them. She quickly nursed and hid the newborn. As the baby slept, Alapai's warriors arrived and saw Kaha'opulani with her own baby girl. Dejected, the warriors left. The race to save a king was over. Naoli had fulfilled his kuleana and the infant Kamehameha was safe.